So, moving on, let's call upon the stage our next speaker, Anil Gulecha, who is the co-founder and CTO at Kelvium. His talk will revolve around the co first contribution in academic journey. Let's call upon the stage, Anil Gulecha for his talk, first in undergraduate education. Uh, hi, so this is my third time uh, speaking on this stage for an open source uh, conference. My first two times was in uh, uh, FOSS.in, which was a similar conference that ran back in 2008 time frame. Uh, th those times I spoke as a student. Uh, I'm now coming you know, way later uh, in my career. One thing that hasn't really changed drastically in 20 years is higher education. Uh, the common refrain still remains, which is the system needs to be improved. Uh, right? Uh, the common refrain from the industry is the skills aren't really there in graduates coming out of various engineering programs. Uh, so I, hi, I'm Anil. I'm the CTO and co-founder at uh, Calvium, which is a program. Uh, it's an undergraduate computer science program. In this talk, I'm going to let me cover the what and why of uh, today. So I'll first of all cover what is uh, Calvium. Calvium is an undergraduate computer science program. It runs in various locations, universities across India. And one of the things, uh, let me call it upfront, a whole bunch of uh, things I'm going to cover are my opinions. And you know, me being one of the co-founders, also translate into how we run things at Calvium. Uh, the why part of it, there's a lot that is uh, common between uh, the free and open source process and education. They're both fundamentally very idealistic which is, uh, in case of FOSS, to build the best long-lasting software, you do it out in the open. But similarly, to build the best computer science program, can we do that in the open and collaborate? Take the learnings that we can get from uh, the free and open source way of uh, building software and apply that directly to education. So I kind of wanted to cover that a bit and call out how we are doing it. So let's take, okay, for basics, right? What's a computer science program? Typically, what's an undergraduate computer science program? So there's a set of courses. Courses give you credits. Uh, typically, it can be a four credit course, eight credit course. You add them all together, and you have a bag of credits. When you collect enough, you get an undergraduate degree. Uh, it's typically 160 credits, up to 200 credits, depending on uh, the type of program. So you have a, a list of courses. Now the trouble starts that not everything is fully aligned, especially in the computer science programs. There's courses which are very relevant, you know, your operating systems, Unix, you know, data structures, algorithms, very relevant, it feels, to computer science. And then you have many other courses in a typical program, your physics, chemistry, mechanical, civil in the first year, the you know, common subjects, and even later on, which are not directly thought out from a computer science interest or outcomes perspective. So in the best case, from such a program, how does it work out? So what ends up happening for a small pool of students is that you go through you know, all of these courses, and typically in the last year, typically last semester, is where you start interacting in the real world. There's an internship, uh, there's a you know, GSOC as a program uh, to contribute in open source. Uh, people start their own projects, sometimes own companies. But that ends up happening just right there at the very fag end, and that is where those real-world skills uh, come out. What are those real-world skills? Things like you know, soft skills, uh, communication, collaboration, doing code reviews, how, how software is even built in the real world. Then the wider aspects of uh, computer science. This is disrupting everything everywhere. You know, what is the ethics around it? What's, uh, how should we think about the policy? How should we think about the philosophy? Uh, two basic functional skills, how to do code reviews, what's the software development, life cycle, things like that. Now, if you have to drastically, say, improve, if you could sit down, wave a magic wand, and try to re-implement it from scratch, how would you do it? So let's redesign it. First is let's remove all of the more non-relevant courses. Keep all your you know, data structures, operating systems, keep them as is. And replace the other ones with real world all the way. Why wait till the last semester? Take them right from the first semester itself. So what are the kinds of things we can learn from how FOSS projects run? For example, can communication and collaboration related skills 
be right there from the first semester. That's a common refrain. Uh, I'm sure there's many students here, many from the industry as well. One of the common uh, uh, things called out when that transition happens from a student to the industry is, hey, not all the skills are there. Uh, why not? Why are we not really focusing on that in uh, undergraduate computer science? Actual technical problem solving. Uh, there's so much focus on the theory, the learning, the, the, you know, the, the assessments, writing the exams part of it. Uh, it. It's, I mean, the common refrain is you mug up the answer and you write it in the exam and you forget about it. But how about actually learning what it takes uh, to solve a problem? That is really the core role that you go out into the world for as a software engineer. And finally, the actual day-to-day uh, -day relevant skill. How do you even work on software? How do you software development life cycle, right? How, how do you even make a commit? How do you uh, get a code change reviewed? How is it merged? How is it launched to staging, to production? What are even many of these words? Why is that something that's not typically covered in depth? from a practical perspective. So if you could somehow magically do all of this within that undergraduate program construct, we can have a, a timeline that looks something like this. Let's uh, replace every course like I called out uh, with real world, uh, non-relevant courses with the real world stuff. Combine the best of humanities. That is where your other skills come in. Critical thinking, problem solving, uh, communication, collaboration, these are all things very much taught in, say, the humanities, the liberal arts courses, but not typically focused on in a computer science program. And these are more equal, if not more important, to working day to day uh, out there. So if we take this kind of an approach, our timeline starts looking like this, which is right from the first semester, the first year, you're learning and developing those real world skills. And hence, as we uh, start making changes, it looks like this. We, let's pick the best of uh, FOSS. You start working with peers and communities across the four years, not just the semester at the end. Uh, what if we did all the assignments, assessments on a GitHub repo from day one, and you learn those skills that way? What if we got rid of the Blackboard, got rid of synchronous lectures, because one of the big problems in the traditional way of learning is that not everyone learns together but the, the traditional lecture model takes everyone together. What if we just got rid of it the way uh, open source projects work, which is you pick a thing and then you just focus on that. You get that done, you move on to the next thing. So what if we replaced it with fully practical stuff, fully self-paced, so everyone can be at different places across the program, and you're fully self-directed in your learning. You don't need to, I mean, it's how anyone of us learns a skill I just go find on Google the best React course probably to uh, learn it. I learned Rust that way. That's how we go learn at our own self-directed way. And if we can focus on the communication skills right from semester one, and uh, f forget about cracking interviews, that is almost a symptom that, hey, somehow we have to integrate, so let's learn you know, these set of problems to be solved. This is how you answer these questions. Those are less meaningful than actually solving real world problems. If you've been doing that a bit, nothing else really matters. You can solve stuff that, uh, uh, that is needed in, out in the real world, whether it be for organizations, whether it's your own startup, your own uh, venture that you want to take on. <clears throat> so all of this to say that we, this is no longer really theoretical. Uh, we ran this last year. We ran it at three locations with all of these exact changes. And here's a few of the results so far. So the first thing is self-directed learning is a drastic, uh, I mean, it's a wonderful thing. If you can remove the part about everyone progressing together, that removes 75 to 80% of the boringness of a typical computer science program. Because finally, you are at the place where you need to be. So students uh, who go through uh, our process, we find that benefit uh, that we have uh, taken from the FOSS world, which is you focus on one thing, you, work, you, you go build, and you go learn that. <coughs> synchronous learning is detrimental. There are some parts of the program that needed to be synchronous, that, uh, that came with live lectures. And those were often the parts that students complained were the most boring. So we, we took steps to just uh, get rid of that, remove that. But that was one learning. Uh, it turns out real-world software development practices are learnable in six months. 
They were just being done at the wrong time, which is the last six months of a program. If you could do that upfront in the first semester or in the second semester, the exponential uh, learning that comes over the next few semesters is incredible. So that was the one learning we discovered, which is, hey, teach those simple things like Git, uh, how, how a pull request works, and how to make changes in the real world. <coughs> Uh, so that that was a significant learning. Git is uh, 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 compounding has a compounding effect in software development. And finally, the one big learning is that soft skills have been totally neglected. And if this can be focused on uh, right from the beginning, you see compounding effects uh, come out of it. Uh, we discovered in running the uh, program that uh, th this cannot be done as a course. You can't have an English course. You can't have an oral communication or a written communication course. But this is something that has to be built as part of the whole education process. But if you can build that right up front, you get the exponential outcomes going from there. Uh, and finally, compounding is magical. It is just 1% a day, but that starts adding up so much. Uh, so these are some of the results that we got from last year. With that, I want to pause for a minute, uh, take up any questions from you. Uh, one. Uh, uh, one ask from everyone here is if you can think of ways, if you run an open source project, if you run a community, and if you'd like to engage with students enrolled into undergraduate program, whether it be projects, events, whatever, please come have a chat. I think we can do lots of magic uh, by bringing this collaboration right into the undergraduate computer science program. Uh, with that, I'll, uh, yeah, I'm done with the prepared portion of this. We have a few minutes left. I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, uh, uh, let me just repeat the question for the benefit of everyone. How do we collaborate with colleges to execute this program? Uh, so my co-founders have a deep background pre previously working with universities, so that's how we got the in, so to speak, of talking to universities. Turns out the overall regulatory framework, which is UGC, uh, and even uh, what's by definition a good IEEE computer science uh, program, is fairly open and flexible for you to bring in all this innovation. It's just that these are hard to do. So a typical program doesn't do that. They do the bare minimum necessary to hand a degree, so to speak. Correct. The way of, yeah. So, so the question is, do we have folks on the ground who run this whole process right there? For example, who does the code reviews that I'm talking about? So yes, uh, in the Calvium system of computer science program, we actually have uh, industry trained professionals on the ground full time with the students who sit with the students as peers in an open office-like environment and actually do the code reviews and all of the processes. There's a question there. Yes, so our curriculum is open. Uh, I mean, it's in the process of becoming open source under the CC license. But if you go to calvium.community, you can actually see the entire uh, coursework up until the third semester. It's fully listed. It's an online LMS and fully accessible to everyone. So calvium.community is the domain. Um, how is uh, evaluation happening? Uh, uh, I was asking how is evaluation happening under this model? Yeah, so uh, that's a very good question. Like, again, right, if you have to create the best program, the, the most common way that evaluations typically happen in an undergraduate program is the end semesters, right? You prepare three, four days before. Any student here will probably, you know, agree to that. The way these exams end up happening is you prepare two, three days before, write the exam, and, okay, you got some score, you move on from it. But it is det detrimental to the learning process because what happened during the whole semester then, which is typically, uh, let's say, not focused on uh, learning. Uh, the way we do it here, it's all digital. There's no pen and paper. One thing we got rid of is all textbooks, black, all the analog stuff, because computer science is a beautiful subject that can be fully learned on a laptop. So the process is fully digital. The regulatory framework allows for continuous assessments. So we just do continuous assessments. So every three to four weeks, there is a evaluation of whatever was learned just before. So that puts the focus on, again, learning. I maybe have a two to three more minutes. Any 
final questions. I am available here. I would really love to catch up with all of you. If you're interested in seeing how we can bring a lot of the spirit of collaboration and building in the open into education, please come and talk. Uh, I think this is totally unexplored territory. Uh, Any more questions? Okay, thank you all so much. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you so much, Anil.